Would you believe that we got another Class C in here with a rotted bunk? Would you believe it? Oh, I, I'm, really? Another one? These things always rot out. Here's a little Conquest. Just a little pea shooter. It's about the same size as that Sunnybrook we did. But um, I don't know if you can see some of the rippling up underneath there. That's kind of indicative that it's not, since it's not sitting flat, it's probably rotted. So, and then uh, you can see it over on this side as well. I'm trying to get the camera and see if you can see it well. You see, we're going to omit that window. That's what we're going to do. We're going to see if we can get around on the other side. I think the scaffold is there on the other side. We've got to get this ladder off and back it up a little bit so we can get everything all set up, get our safety rails and all that jazz on there. I just want to show you what we got. So this roof has been coated. And you can see how it's all flaking up. Okay, right there. It just comes up. It's not going to stay. That's why we don't do coatings. Look at all that over there. You can see how all that is. Here's your typical RV roof. Put some more on, more on. Look at all that. Someone already tried to do it. You can see that's different from that. It's still cracked. Over around there, you can see around the plumbing. It's just the way they do things. We're going to omit the luggage rails as well. And uh, we're going to try and squeeze a satellite thing on here. You order a big dish satellite. Like, literally, it's big. It's going to really look weird on this thing. So, obviously, we got the AC up. And you can see some of the moisture that had gotten up underneath there you know you really really supposed to change those gaskets on there uh, every couple of years that's what they say but we're going to rip this thing up you can see some more how they coated it right there so it's all failed it, it just doesn't work that way you know let's do it right and if you look at i don't know if you can really notice it from here but when you come over it burps up like this and so now the water isn't even rolling off so i wouldn't be surprised if it had rolled back and cut back up underneath that crack there and you know got into the the bunk and that's maybe what propagated some of the problems there but there's more on the other side and like i said i don't have a a uh the scaffolding over there we're gonna get all that put together that's what they're about to do i just want to do a quick video so we can put it all together and then go to work again get the same same stuff here you know and that's what they want you to do so what died core does is they exploit people's ignorance to roof systems that's what they do so that isn't the way you do a roof. You, you can Google or uh, Google commercial roof images. Just Google it yeah, or duck, duck, go it. However you want to do it, brave it, or whatever. Get online, look it up, get some images, and you're going to see the vents. You're going to see the plumbings and, and, and a boot. You're going to see like air conditioners. And you're going to see all these things up on a curb, which is basically a box. You're going to see them all, all in there because that's how a flat roof functions. You just putting it down like this, putting, you know, and trying to have the bolts come up to squish that down to get that sealed, and then uh, putting this down here and slobbering around some more of that die core booger, uh, that doesn't work. If it worked, these big companies, these huge factories that, are, you know, like, like Little Debbie Cakes or Nestle or Hershey or whoever, right, these big places, um, you would see that. The, the, to do a roof like that, almost 70% of the cost of doing a roof system is the detail, and this is what you call detail, okay? So you could imagine how much money those companies would save if all they had to do is take their components, screw them down, and then slobber it with caulking, right? But on the other end, if we, they had to go back every few months to keep going around all of those vents and everything that they have on these roofs, they'd go broke because by the time they finish one end, they'd go back start all over again. It, it's not the right way to do a roof. But Dicor exploits people's ignorance to roof systems, and that's what they do. Is they put some more on there. Now, the, mo the most I can make out of that Dicor, the most I can make, and I'm guessing this is Dicor. I haven't done an analysis on it, but typically it's a common product that you use on here. Um, but the most I've ever got out of it is that it was like an acrylic butyl. So when the acrylic cracks, that exposes the butyl. The UV light hits it, and it starts to dry it out, and that's what causes this cracking. And it does the same similar thing on like a, a tar and gravel, which is a, a type of roof. They put the gravel on there to reflect the UV light. But over time, you know, the, and with rain, the gravel may wash away in different areas. And now the tar in itself, the bitumen, is all exposed. And that's where it'll typically break down. They have another roof system. It's called a, uh, a built-up where they just put ba a base sheet, which is basically tar paper, a little thicker. They'll put it down, and then they put tar on it, and the, which is a bitumen. And then they'll put another sheet, and then they'll 
put some more bitumen on it, then they put another sheet, and they put another, and every time they do that, it's called a ply. That's where the where the um, term single ply came in. They'll call this single ply because it's just one shot, you're done. Where, uh, again, years ago, when you used to have to put the layers on there, they may spec out and say, hey, this needs to be two ply, this needs to be three ply, meaning like how many layers of tar paper and how many layers of bitumen they'd put on there. But those roofs didn't typically have gravel on them, and then they would put a coating on those. But you're talking about a building that isn't going down the, the road at 70 miles an hour, twist and flexion like these, you know, these things do. These are like a rolling cabinet. So all that being said, like I said, Dicor exploits your ignorance to roof systems because they just want you to buy more product to keep slobbering around there. You do that every three, four months. Gee whiz, at $14 a tube? That's the last I heard it was. Uh, 14 bucks a tube. And everybody buying it, gee whiz, that's their cash cow. So, of course, they're not going to tell you any better. They want you to buy it. To them, it's a moneymaker, you know? So, but uh, we're going to rip all, rip this whole roof up. We're going to see what's up underneath it. I wouldn't be surprised if we have to rebuild this roof or add some strength to it. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all, but we're going to find out. I know i got some issues in there, and i got to jack that up and straighten it out. But I don't particularly like it all flat. But we're going to see how it performs when we rip it up and see what's underneath it and see how bad that is. Uh, there may be a possibility that we may have to reframe it. I'm not sure, but before I do anything, obviously, I let the customer know what they may or decide to do, right? So um, let's take a look at it, and uh, once we get it up, I'll give you more updates on it. But, but you're just wasting your money with these coatings. You just, and if they worked, I would put them on. When we did commercial work, I had big sprayers that would recover, like our, you know, these roofs, these metal roofs, or even the ones that I was explaining, but they were, it was enormous. And again, we had recovery machines. They were expensive, but if it worked, you don't need that type of machine to do this. But uh, if it worked, I'd still put a coating on it. It's not going to work on an RV application. That's why we don't do them. And nor do I endorse the spray-on roof systems. I wouldn't want to spray over all this. I don't know what's underneath it. I don't know how bad this roof is. I want to see what's going on underneath before I just commit to trying to spray over it. And when you do spray over it, you can watch their videos. And also on this channel, you can... Uh, Put in the search bar, even RV Armor thinks we're better. I think that's the title of that video, and I go over all of the uh, cons to the uh, RV Armor or Flex Armor. They're the same animal. Uh, I go on over all of the spray-on type roofs. On the RV Armor in particular, they have a video on air conditioners, and one of the guys there asks, hey, what do you do about air conditioners? And if you listen to the video within the one minute mark, He's leaning on the air conditioner and he says, if this was a commercial roof, it would be up on a curb with flashing and counter flashing. And that's exactly how we do it. So they know that's the right way to do it. They just don't do it. So, you know, and he'll tell you, if you air conditioner, you will get leaks, it's possible. He says, what you need to do is go in and tighten those down. And there are bolts that come up in the corners right here on this particular uh, model. Not all of them. There's some that you can't do that to like uh, certain class A's and certain even fifth wheels, they've bolted from here with a lag bolt into the actual roof deck. So you're not gonna, this type of system, when you lay it down, there's a plate on the inside. You put a bolt up through the plate, that goes into a, a nut in the back of this air conditioner over here, okay? When you tighten it up, it squeezes it down, it's called a compression fitting. Not all of them occur pressure fittings, but that being said, you cannot over torque these because if you do, you'll distort that foam and it will not seal right. It's got to come down evenly to be watertight. But again, after a while, with all the debris, see all that debris in there? All that debris and all that, you know, pollen, whatever, leaves that decompose and all that stuff, the dust, when it gets in there, it starts to uh, just cause the gasket to dry out and fail. And that's where you're getting the leaks. And you can see this one's compressed pretty good. It's really supposed to be close to an inch thick. And that one there is squashed down. I mean, and it's not even as well. This on this corner is a little thinner than down here. So you see it wasn't always sitting that well either. But again, that's just not the right way to do it. You put it up on a curb like you're supposed to. You don't have that erosion, that water pounding on it. You, you know, the, it'll hit the curb and wash out. That's the whole idea to it. And that's why we do them the way we do. So, well, there's a little... Uh, a little uh, Roof 101 education for you. And like I said, let us tear this off and obviously I'll show you more as we go along. All right, this is what we got. Yahoo, the window is going away. Uh, but this is a typical typical uh, frame and this is why they shake apart. So all you got is that one in the yeah. center and then you have it down on this end and also on this end right here. All they do, hey, quiet on the set. 
quiet on the set. See how they just staple it right there? That's all they do. There's no glue, no nothing. And then they start shaking apart. When they start shaking apart, then the shakes the caulking loose. When it shakes the caulking loose, then you get more water in it, and then everything starts to rot. So this lower end bunk, that's rotted. And you can see over here too, it's rotted. I'll see if I can, uh, I can probably pull it down, but if you've watched any of my other videos, you can tell what rot looks like. But see it's all delammed up in there? That's what that is. Delam, what delam is, is delamination. So this is one ply that's sitting right here with my, my fingers touching right here. This is another ply and the grain of this one is going from side to side. This grain is going from front to rear. Then the other grain it goes side to side and that's how it's all locked in. And uh, that's where it gets its strength. It's an orientation. And the grain usually is it's fighting against itself, you know, obviously glued. So, but we're going to have to obviously rebuild the bunk. Uh, all most Class C's that come in here, the bunks are all rotted, but we'll make a nice foam one that I'll put in there. It's going to be rigid and it'll have more. These are called radius, and I'll have more when you put more in there. When you put several more than one radius, is a ra they're called radii. So we'll be putting those in there, and we'll remove that window, uh, block it up, whatever. We'll see how much rot we get up on there, and then uh, on the top, We've got, we also got this, that's the other thing I was looking at. There's a mess back here. Look at this ladder. Looks like uh, electrical tape all around here. Yeah. So I'm going to have to fix this ladder up. And a lot of times, and you want to inspect these, because these here inside these, I know I'm coming off on the roof a little bit, but, and you probably can't see, but down inside there's a special nut. And on this one, it's inside here. And then this threads into it, and it's round, and it's got little, like, tines on it, if you will. Um, they call them star nuts, if you, ever, if you need some, that's what they're called, star nuts. And then you have to drive it back in, and then you can put them in there. But that's what, that's what they're called, is star nuts. So you may be able to find them, but see how that one down there is all rotted, too? So I've got to rebuild this ladder. Uh, it's just a pain in the butt, it really is. But, you know, the way things are going, sometimes it's... You know, I don't know if it necessarily would be cheaper to buy a new ladder, but even if I did, I'm probably am, I'm not going to get it with the way things are going, shipping and everything else. It takes a while to get all this stuff. So we're going to investigate the rest of it. I've got this puffiness here. I don't know what that's all about, but we'll check it. You can open this up a little bit. I'll get a flashlight in there, but that, that's opening up more than what it should. So it's telling me that that's d lamb too, so I wouldn't be surprised if I got to take this back wall off. Uh, and again, that's something I pass along to the customer. They make those executive decisions. So, uh, he may say, forget it. Uh, he may say, do it. Um, but I don't want him to think that I just have an open wallet or a blank check to just do whatever I want. I mean, if it was mine, I'd fix it for sure. But like I said, it's his decision, I guess. All right, so we come up here. There's our roof. So some of the things I already don't like about this roof is the... Uh, the trusses are better than some of what I've seen, and I don't even know if you want to call them trusses, because they, they're they just the, the framing to the roof. This is a ply foam roof, that's what this is. So you got that metal piece right there, and it runs all the way across, and then that's all they have. And the next one's probably back here, and then they just put these blockers in and they glue them to the foam. Same with those those wooden ones. So this this metal one goes over to there, and then they just three-sided with wood. So some of my concerns is I can tell that this roof right here from this vent has a little bit of a uh, belly in it. So we're going to fix that. But the other thing I don't like is even though they put these together, they don't glue them. They just glue the ceiling and they put the foam and they drop the truss in there. And then they clad it over with another piece of eighth inch. So that's all this is. Eighth inch foam. And if you go down, that's the ceiling in there. So if you were to take a screwdriver and poke through it, you'd poke right through your seal, and that's only eighth inch. They don't have all this glued together. That needs to be glued together. So we're going to strip all this to find our framing, if you will. To find all that, we're going to jack the roof up to get it back aligned because it's got that belly in it. And then uh, when we go to redeck it, I want to fill that with an adhesive. So now that's bonded to the sides. And then when we put ours on, everything will be all bonded together. It needs to be all bonded together. So 
you see we just got a wooden frame in there that's all that one is you see all the rust and everything all the water got in now we also have a satellite going on here so i have to get some strength on on there to put that satellite to have something to bite to so that's something else that i'm pondering on more than likely we'll just put some steel in there some heavy gauge steel um, that will give us a bite when we go to put the screws down it'll be up underneath we'll put it on top of this and then when we clad over it with the wood you know that'll and we'll obviously glue it down but uh, everything will all be adhered together that's about that's about all we can do for it um he like said i'll i stew on it and i look at it and then i look at everything else going on and you know hopefully i won't change my mind on it. i go hey, i don't like that one i want to change it this way um otherwise that's about where we are so far with this little this little turd of a camper and uh, we're gonna get it going like i said we'll stop talking and get to work so you saw all the damage that was that we're showing you now but um when you see the first video that the opening video and you look at it and some people say hey you know i'll bet i could spray over that you know we can just clean it down and spray over it this is why we are not a proponent of spray on systems because there's always repairs that need to be done under these coaches and you start just willy-nilly just hey i'm gonna just put some spray over it and be done with it um you're not fixing all these problems so uh, again i'm not a proponent for it i've done commercial work for 35 years i guess and i've had sprayers and they're expensive but that's okay i mean i've had them to recover like roofs that like these metal roofs up on our on here that's what we've had them and i've even done some other membrane roofs but those are on commercial buildings that are not moving um you know down the road 70 miles an hour and racking and twisting and flexing but to spray something like this so my point is that i've had them i'm not afraid to go buy a machine if it worked but it doesn't work because it, you always have stuff up underneath it you have to fix those things before you just start putting it together you can't just you know try to put a, a band-aid on a on a big problem like that and that to me is the only what you would sum that up as uh, a spray system on the video for rv armor he has a video up there about um uh acs and they ask him what he does about them and within the one minute mark he says if it was a commercial job it would have curbs on it with flashing and counter flashing that's exactly what we do so he knows that but he, they just don't do that that's just you know and they'll tell you that you may have leaks and you're supposed to go in and tighten the bolts down on the ac you go from inside the ceiling you take the cover down and you just can't crush those things down it doesn't those things are gaskets you don't crush a gasket like that um, it, then it will leak so you, that's what i'm saying the whole system the whole design of an rv roof is terrible you want to do it right do it right the first time you don't have to keep messing with it so that's why we take the time to build all the curbs and everything on our channel if you go to the channel and put in um even rv armor thinks we're we're better i think that's the name of the video but you can watch that video and i go over a lot or you may even just be able to punch in rv armor on the search in our channel um but you can um watch how i go over all the things i really don't like about the system for an rv it may work better in a different application but not so much on an rv and people exploit other people's uh, ignorance to roof systems and they just want to sell 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 they want to have a channel they want to have all this fancy stuff i don't need to have a channel and be a, a fancy guy i'm just trying to get folks educated before they spend the money and then it fails and they got to come in here and then we got to say oh yeah to do it the right way we got to do this that the other thing and you know double dipping on that wallet sometimes will you know hurt the college fund you know so um but anyhow and there's a lot of guys out there tell you how to fix things and you know it, it, don't believe half of it if it says rv on it don't buy it uh, they, they're just exploiting you so you know just uh you got to understand that uh, we've done it time and time again where they come in and oh someone did our, our roof system and we've done many of roofs where people have messed them up and we have to go in and redo them the right way so just trying to save everybody some aggravation and uh, that's why our videos are just meat and potato type videos we don't have uh, all that fancy intro you know i'm not in here trying to show my ugly face off because it doesn't matter what i look like you just need to see the quality of the work that i'm doing right and the, what we're doing for you and um but they'll get on here and they're just for the sake of hearing themselves or seeing themselves on the channel or whatever um and i see the comments that some people leave they go hey you did a good job and i watched that video myself and i shake my head and i go no they didn't but what is sally the secretary what does she know about roof systems you see something that's nice and clean and shiny and bright and you go hey that looks great well yeah it may look great but it's not done right you know so 
Just uh, you just got to keep that in mind. Okay, so uh, they want to put a satellite dish on here, like a big one, not the dome, the one that actually comes up and rotates and does all that stuff. But some of the concerns that I have, when they start drilling all these big holes, that hole is almost the same diameter as the tubing. It's the same, the diameter of the hole is the same thickness of this. That's probably like a one and a quarter inch hole, one and a half inch stock. Excuse me. So the problem that I'm, or the concern that I'm finding is already right now, there's a big gap under here. Uh, I shouldn't say big, it's probably, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch, okay? And that's a concern because it's already starting to sag. And you can see they did the same here, and we checked that one, and it's got a little bit of a sag as well. So, you've got an air conditioner sitting here, and then I have to put a satellite dish. That's a lot of weight. So, I don't know what we're going to do. We may end up having to put in new trusses and actually put some camber in it like we've done a few other coaches. I don't like this style because all they do is just run these straight across, and this is just low alloy aluminum. So, how long will it last? I, I don't know. But check this out. Okay? No welds. So now as this is going down, there's nothing there to resist it. If that was welded, that may help keep some of it, but that gap will probably just open up. None of them are welded. All they do is put these, I call them snout welds. I call them snout welds, but I mean they're really called tack welds. A tack weld is when you uh, just, before you weld something, you just hit it with a little zap, and that just helps you align it a little better before you actually execute the whole weld and find out the piece moved on you. That's really what it does. Um, just kind of keeps it in place. I call them snot welds because a lot of these so-called welds that they put on there, she whiz, I mean, I think I pull bigger boogers out of my nose at times. <laughs> I call them snot welds. But uh, same thing here. None of them are welded like that. And you got all these holes in here, so all of those are going to compromise the integrity of the structure there, I meaning this frame and that frame. You, you can't do that. Uh, not without it sagging. So that's my concern. Like I said, we put that on there. He's going to come back in a few years with an inspection. I'm going to find this thing bellied out. Um, I wouldn't like to see that. So I got to bring it to his attention and see where we're going to go from there and see what the uh, the customer wants to do. So, but um, otherwise, you know, that's that's where we're at so far. Um, I'll update you on the other stuff. But again, these are the first things. When it comes to my mind, I like to try to put it on here so the customer can see what we're doing. That's really why we put these videos together. You know, sometimes you can get some YouTube tips out of them, cool, some DIY tips, and uh, that's an antenna over there, but we're going to omit that. That's where we're probably going to put the satellite because all of his electrical and everything there, we're going to mount the satellite, and I'm going to drop the wires, and that's it. We do not hook up satellites at all. We also do not install Air 360s of any kind, of any kind. They are just a pain in the tail for sure. Um, now the other wine guards and the, the king domes, those ones, no problem. The Air 360, uh, it's a problem. So, um, all right, well, uh, he didn't get that. He got the satellite. Like I said, it's a pretty big one. He's going to look like a storm chaser with this thing on here by the time he gets through with it because that, that satellite's going to dwarf the heck out of this roof. It, it, it's going to span almost four foot, so like 44 inches or so. That's, that's a pretty good stretch. All right, this is what we got. Rotted ceiling panel, it just collapsed here, and you can see how bad it is. So we got to replace ceiling panel, that's what we're working on now. We got, we were starting to get some of the trusses in, and then that thing there, when we started working on this side, it just, you can tell it was that rotted, it just fell right in. It couldn't take any pressure at all. So, but, uh, so like I said, we're going to tear it out, put a new panel in it, and go from there. But this is what we're doing. We are strengthening up the roof, we made new trusses. And we're going to slot them all in, glue them all together. We put them all 16, roughly 16 on center. And I say that because, like, you got that vent there and then this vent here. And it may be, like, whatever. We'll have to cut our pieces accordingly to make it fit. But we wanted to add strength on each side of the vents. And, uh, obviously, on the air conditioner, too, we wanted to do that. And then, like I said, we had that blowout up there. So we're getting that squared away. And then we'll cut another piece of shape in to make the difference up on this aluminum frame to the top. But I really am suspicious that the back wall is rotted. I haven't gotten there yet. Now, he just updated on it. All right, we have got it framed so far. So, some of the problems you got. This is the wall. That's as thick as the wall is right there. They, one inch. 
So you put in new trusses, they're not sitting on anything but a ceiling panel. So what we did is we made some uh, some brackets. And this here, the bracket goes all the way over to there. And then it's screwed into here. And then it's screwed into there. And then it's screwed down there. And it's glued. So now all that stress is being pushed down onto the wall like it should be. And it's also leashed together. So um, next stage that we're going to do is uh, we got some foam we're going to put back in here and build it up a little more and um, fill this one in. But we had that sailing panel. So you can see the way we did this and we shaped it all. We shaped it all. So now we're going to put the other in here and we'll shape it as well. And then um, we're about ready for decking afterwards because we had to put the new sailing panel in. So I'll get out and show you that. And uh, I'll do it on another clip. You don't need to see me walk down the stairs. And uh, that's, that's about where we're at so far. So everything's looking pretty good, pretty tight. I like it, I like it, I like it. But there's a lot of work to doing all this stuff. That's for sure, you're gonna do it right. You can't just throw them in. Because like you said, then they'd just be sitting on the ceiling. Well, what good is that? Then all that weight's just basically pushing on the ceiling. And I didn't want that. The whole idea was to strengthen the roof system. So the very, very next step is uh, we'll jack up the roof a little bit, kind of overextend it just a shade. And then we put the decking on, it'll want to rest, but it would have to fight. This has camber on it. I put some camber on here. You can see they've got kind of like a little shape to them. And I left some of it flat up here because I wanted as much strength as I could out of the board. But also, I got to put a satellite dish up here too. So uh, it'll, uh, it'll help balance the satellite dish out a little bit. I'm thinking about, we're probably going to put it over there, right on the other side of the air conditioner. And then uh, drop it down, the wires down in the cabinet. It should fit right over there. And uh, unless I can find a better spot, I don't know. But I mean, it's, it's four feet long, almost. Let me go show There's you the ceiling panel. panel. So we put all these braces in here. That's why I said we're going to jack this up a little bit. And then I got some foam up there so I don't mar up the ceiling. And we just jack it up and stress it out a little bit. So then, like I said, by the time we put the plywood down, it'll have to fight the plywood if it wants to reshape. I mean, I don't ever see that happening. Or I don't even see it sagging. But that's what I like to do is just, just, a little bit, you know. We still got the wall to do here. Got the wall to do over here. I got most of the bunk rebuilt already, the platform. So that's all going in. So we'll, we'll put another piece, another um, another a, uh, another jack right here to hold that. And then, um, but right now, that was just to get us going, get everything balanced out. So we've got, like I said, we've got everything all glued and screwed and uh, secured in there. Well, we're come. starting to get the decking on. Uh, all right, so we got some new foam in there. We're going to glue it all. We glued all the foam back together on here. There's not much with a little edge on here. We'd have to shave it and make a heck of a mess anyways. So, so that's what we did. We foamed it all in. So now we got strength. We glued that piece down to this piece, the original. So we built it up that inch. Because we got a one inch rise for the camber that we were trying to get to strengthen the roof deck out. So that's what we were working on. Now what we're doing is just stapling it all down. All right, we already did the passenger side. Now we're going to do the driver's side. It's already glued. And you see we got our strips in there and everything and all our protective strips. So now we're just going to roll this side all over. All rolled up. Now what we're going to do is, this is just a balance roller I use. Then we're going to get the big roller on here in, in a minute after we get it all set. We're rolling it out with the toe masher. That's the toe masher. And nice and tight. Beautiful, beautiful, I say. Like a work of art, yeah? We got the back wall all d -land. And you see it all splitting right there. That's all d -land. All that. And there's some more pieces down here. So we got to shave off the siding and then we got to resheathe it and try and get the siding back on. Right, we are done. Here's our logo, RVRI, August 21. So we got all the lights sealed. Everything sealed around there. They had to do the back wall. Everything is all sealed down here. And uh, we've got all our curbs. All those are all mounted. Everything's all done. Every, all that's all heat welded together. There's no caulking down here. That's all heat welded. There's obviously caulking up on the top. That's not going to get the erosion effect. Uh, as you would if you just, like when they typically do it on an RV and slap it down. I like to see covers on there. We don't have covers that'll accommodate those because they're too tall. So we may have to get some newer ones and put them on. 
But uh, we've got this little antenna on here. We mounted that. If he has any issues with it, all he has to do is I do those, take those nuts. There's three of them, one, two, and three. Pop it off, unplug it, put a new one on. You got the stands in the back, kind of gives balance to the AC. And then uh, all the curves, they all have the flashing, this counter flashing that goes around it, every one of them, even the satellite here. We custom made that so it looks like it belongs to it. But uh, the, when the water starts trickling down here in a rainstorm, obviously, and, or even if you're washing a pressure washer, the water is going to trickle down past the counter flash of the curb and it's going to roll out because up underneath is just a foam gasket. I don't want water getting in there. So it's not going to get in on the sides. It's going to wash right out. So uh, this was supposed to be a vent, but uh, with this satellite right here, we weren't able to, because it's, it comes up and it swings, it would have been in the way. So he said you just omit it. So what we did is just covered it over. We already had it in. We can't just tear it right up because if we did, it would just look worse. So we just left it. And uh, obviously went around the whole lights, got the whole bunk back together. Already showed you all that. Went around, resealed the lights. Window is gone. New piece of Phylon in the front. So uh, we want to thank uh, the customer for coming in and bringing this to us. We really appreciate the work, and uh, we're really honored that he traveled as far as he did to bring it to us. I uh, can't remember exactly where he's from, but he's got he's got probably a, a seven eight hour trek to come on down here. Um, so that's a long ways. Like I said, we're just honored that he does. That's why we take the time to do a good job. We want to do a great job, and we want to make sure you're not going to have any issues with it. So whatever it takes to get it to where it needs to be, instead of just slapping it together, as you can see, we rebuilt the roof, we replaced the ceiling panel, uh, rebuilt this back wall here, and um, you know we, we had there's a whole bunch of other stuff we had to do, and we got to take the time to do it right. So um, on these bell caps right here, um, the way we've got these designed, again, these are all when they say bell caps, these are bell caps, but around this plumbing right here, if this cap pops off, it's just going to go down into the holding tank. So there's no worry there. Like I said, we've got them all, even the same one with that, same thing. And uh, we put the logo on there, really, so when, when we see this come back for inspections, or even if you want to sell it, we don't want someone trying to talk him down, saying, oh, I gotta put a roof on these, they all stink, they're this, that, the other thing. You know, wait a minute, I just had that put on on August 21. So, uh, you know, I don't want anybody getting, uh, you spend a lot of money to have this fixed, and then someone try to discount it, right? So that's one reason why we put it on. And also when it comes to the inspections, we like to see how the roofs perform. So we've seen them come in over the years and they look real well. They look real well. There is one on there, it's a Fusion on our channel. And um, we did that years ago and then he come back and he had some issues with the slide out that uh, the gaskets were bad or something. We fixed it, but he took that on some really skinny pig trails. He did motocrossing. So he'd have all his bikes in the back and he'd get down some pig trails. Well, anyhow, the whole shoulder, because it had a round shoulder, boy, it has some gouges in it. Never leaked or at all. But we got that video posted. I think it's posted as one badass roof. And I'm sorry we don't put all the links and all that stuff in there. I mean, we were really, really busy. We're just trying to get the information out for this customer. But you can go search it on there. Um, all the girls do when they get the camera here, they just put all the clips together, and they go in and put a transition in it, and that's it. We, we don't edit anything. Um, we're not trying to, we don't have an intro, we're not trying to be some fancy, you know, YouTube stars or anything like that. We're just trying to get information out to folks. Uh, but uh, anyhow, the uh, roof itself, the warranty on this system, this is a 20 year, this is a real commercial roof. This is the same roof you're going to find on uh, a restaurant, you'll find it on a library, an office building, a hospital, same exact material, same exact membrane, same exact detail, like meaning the curves, the curves, all those are all the same. So I designed them all so they work and function properly for an RV. But uh, that being said, this is a 20-year system. It's a structured membrane, meaning inside this it has a weave in the membrane. And that gives it strength in case there are any uh, tree branches that want to try to come down on it. I mean, if it does poke a hole in it, it can be easily patched. We can just hit it with a patch like that, a square patch, just much like I put that on there, the logo. We can heat well the patch. You don't have to do the whole entire roof. So we leave everybody with a care package. In the care package, they should have a couple of peel and stick patches for immediate, and they also should have um, caulking in there. In the caulking, you can use it in the rain. It's water um, moist. Uh, <laughs> it's moisture cured. So if you have the hole, you can just open the hole up, put the nozzle in there, and squirt, 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 squirt around in kind of like a circle motion up underneath the hole. Squeeze it back together, it'll ooze out of the hole. It's done. Um, you can wash this with. A um, some dishwashing liquid, you, anything. You can pressure wash it even. Uh, when we did commercial work, we used to pressure wash them. 
with a fan nozzle and uh, get all the dirt off so we could see where all the little holes were from techs that would leave air conditioner screws out and so forth that would wash here and there and then eventually someone step on them and put a small hole in the roof but uh, that being said like you said this is a real easy system to um, to inspect as well so we want to see them come back for the inspection we like to see them 30 days 60 days as they're pushing it but uh, you know, I like to give people adequate notice because they know they got schedules that they have to try to do. But we want to just make sure that everything we did is just the way, you know, he paid us to do it. And everything is sitting, sitting sound, it's sealed sound. And uh, that being said, you know, if some folks can't make it, then again, there's a 20 year system. I would hate for someone to not inspect it, not get something done. And it was the smallest thing that could have been fixed. So understand where I'm going with this is these rack and flex and twist. If I get the same exact coach, it's gonna rack, flex, and twist differently than this one. So even though we seal everything up and we use all the proper materials, obviously I'm reliant on the materials to do their job, the manufacturers to make the materials properly. And if there's something small that we can catch, we can typically catch that within the first initial inspection. So um, then after that, it's annual. You come back in once a year, we check it out, whatever it needs, we take care of it. But basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna, there's uh, some caulking right on here. That's a nice clean strike too. Um, but anyhow, you want to just put some friction on there and see if it's loose. We leave them with some caulking in that care package. If you think you need to add some, great. We even leave them with primers and everything else that they may need to do uh, to do a, a little touch up themselves if they can't make it. But um, we'd hate with someone to come back and go, hey, yeah, this is all destroyed now, you know, and it was something simple that could have been fixed. That's not fair to us either. So uh, again, that being said, you can wash these and then with the dishwashing soap and uh, even a pressure washer whatever but to check all these uh, welds to check all the boots this is a checker tool that you can buy or you can use a, a fork you can use a butter knife you can use something that's just not so so sharp that it may actually tear into it but you see how that slipped that means that's a good weld right there because it's so slick it can't even catch it and that's all you do you go around every single thing like that go around every single one of them and you check and if you notice a little, hey, there's a little something there, you can put a little of the primer that we leave and you can put some of the product on there and that's easy. And then when we bring it in for another visit, then what we'll do is uh, weld it if we have to, but it's, uh, it's not common. So, but again, I always err on the side of caution. I don't take anything for granted. I do the best job I can and I'd be a fool if I was that arrogant and said, oh, you'll never have an issue with it. I don't know, you know, I, I try to work the best I can to make sure like all these welds are all tight we check them two and three times uh, before they leave the leave the place but uh, again you know I'm reliant on the manufacturer that this product was designed properly there wasn't a fly in the ointment so to speak and I need to know that if there's some issues so uh, I think I already explained about the counter flash how the water comes down it'll roll up underneath the counter flashing that we have built into there because of that foam gasket up underneath there um, and that's it like I said we definitely want to thank the customer for bringing this all this way I know we replaced the ceiling panel in here, and uh, uh, what we normally do on the interiors, we just leave it where folks can either wallpaper it or they can uh, paint it, but uh, you're not going to find the same wallpaper, you're not going to find the same panel that you're going to find yeah, that was originally in this coach, that's for sure, not in this old one. But even in some of the new ones, they change everything so frequently, and it's just not cost effective a lot of times. Peel and stick wallpapers that work real well. We did one on another coach. I think we made the whole front bunk uh, a log, log cabin look and she really liked that but they have all different prints a whole bunch of different ones you can get sceneries you can do all sorts of stuff now with peel and stick uh type things but we want to you know remind everybody these aren't diy videos as much as we try to get the information out there uh, we get inundated with a lot of calls i just simply don't have the time to be on the phone with everybody so um you know if you get a, a couple of tips out of this thing great you know use them but there's a process to this and I just don't have the time to go over the whole entire process of how this comes together. Uh, I have time to do a clip here and there, but there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that I just don't have time to show. I mean, I, and I don't have a cameraman. Like I said, we're not trying to be YouTube stars. We're just trying to get the information to the customer to show them all what we did and everything was all put back together and so forth. So, well, we appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one. If you do like the video, from what I understand, if you hit a like up, that means if someone goes to search for something similar to what we're doing, uh, the video will pop up. So uh, you can do that if you want to. Uh, again, it doesn't, you know, not, not trying to sound uh, ungrateful, but it doesn't really make a difference to us if you do. Um, but it just helps other folks find information. 
So um, like I said, hit that like button. And if you do want to subscribe, cool, you'll see all the other videos. There's over a hundred and some odd videos up there on YouTube. And um, like I said, we appreciate it.